Good afternoon. I thought I'd do a video regarding the King's Corrugation, which happened on Saturday, um, three days ago. And I want to give you a view from various perspectives, one being from an Anglican perspective, the other being from a Catholic perspective, and the other looking at the whole overview from a general perspective, whether that be just sort of nominal Christian or an unbeliever. Um, I'm going to be honest, and after watching the whole ceremony, as beautifully orchestrated it was, you know, splendid choir, you know, the whole attire, the opulence, everything, you know, the choreography, you know, I respect that it was well thought out, well drilled, well put together. But that aside, coming at it from an emotional standpoint, how I see it as a Christian, I have to blatantly, brutally be honest and say, it didn't sit well with me. Um, and, I, and I don't think it would sit well with Christ. It's, it's quite sad. I think the whole thing was riddled with contradictions. I think it was fake. When I say fake, I don't think it was authentic. Um, you know, bearing in mind this is meant to be a Church of England ceremony. And I, I think it's a kick in the teeth to not only devout, Church of England um, members and followers, but people of that apostolic union as well, um, i.e. Catholic Orthodox. And the reason why I say that is because quite simple. Now we know the royal family um, honour their, their, their long history and, um, and we know they want to upkeep that as part of their culture as much as possible. So the service, or ceremony, coronation, whatever you like to call it, it is, um, hasn't changed much in the last thousand years. I, th I think the first English monarch uh, religious coronation was done in the 7th or 8th century. So if you look back through time, it's very much been the same process. Um, very liturgical, very... Catholic, i.e. the ritual, the homilies, even, even the choir choices of songs, really old Latin songs. Um, so what you've got basically is a very Catholic service in a previously Catholic church Westminster Abbey was built 13th century, so for 200 years it was under the Pope, right? Catholic vestments, everything Catholic, right? Even the communion, you know, how it was done, um, the ritual behind it. You know, the breaking of bread, the chalice, the prayers. Very, very Catholic. But what it stood for was the polar opposite. It was like, almost like, I want my cake. I'm going to eat it. And that's it, whether you like it or not. And I'm just going to pick and choose and put together what I deem fit regardless to how much substance or authenticity it has. And that's what they've basically done. Um, and, it, and it's played with examples throughout. I mean, okay, so you've got two female bishops um, taking part, um, professing prayers and blessing Charles, King Charles. Did you know those two female bishops are the only bishops in the Anglican communion? So there's 883, I looked this up, bishops. And they, these two figures are very controversial. 
extremely controversial. I think one is from Canada. I'm not sure where the other's from. I think one of them's uh, Episcopalian Church in Canada. Um, and then that that's the black lady, and I'm not sure where the other one's from. But regardless, they're very controversial figures. And they've been brought in just to show how inclusive um, the church is. And, um, and and it's riddled with examples of that. There was a there was a Sikh man singing in the choir. Now, whatever your views on that are, um, you have to remember that it is a Christian choir. So you would expect the person singing to be Christian um, by default. So that raises question marks. There was another Sikh gentleman at the altar who passed. King Charles, the, his glove. Um, not quite sure what that symbolises. I know the sword symbolises the spirit. Um, there was a sword used. Um, but we'll get to that later. It was um, a very sacramental service. And this brings me to the other issue um, I have where... Okay, so Protestantism or Anglicanism, or Church of England, whatever you want to call it, don't believe in all seven sacraments. You know, to my knowledge, they believe in two. You could argue one and a half, because um, Holy Communion, they don't believe transubstantiates. So, but let's just say two for argument's sake. Don't think many people know this, but King Charles... partake into a holy sacrament that is only given to priests in the Roman Catholic Church. I'm going to say that again. King Charles had partaken in a holy sacrament that is only given to Roman Catholics. So, when he went behind that shield with Archbishop J just Jonathan Welby, he was being anointed by oil. Not ordinary oil, guys. Oil straight from Israel. From an old olive tree in Jerusalem that has links with Jesus Christ. They blessed his feet. They blessed his hands. They blessed his chest plate. This was stuff... I shouldn't say stuff. This was anointment to give Charles the Holy Spirit. Jo Justin Welby, Jonathan Welby, before he fulfilled this, he actually declared, um, not debate, uh, I'm not going to quote word by word, but he said, um, this will be giving you the Holy Spirit and we will introduce you into the priesthood. This is what, Catholics do when they ordain priests guys this is what they do it's, it, it, it's so they can have holy orders this is why only a priest in the Catholic Church can take confession you know this is why a priest can only anoint the sick so when you're dying in hospital quite often if you're a Catholic you'll bring a priest in and they'll read you your last rites these two things they have given to Charles. Now we all know that it's very unlikely Charles will ever um, use these holy orders because it's actually debated whether he's even Christian full stop because he goes along with all this multi-faith stuff which, which, which you can't be a Christian if you go along with other religions and you say that um, you know, we're all one and um, we all believe the same God, which is not true. You know, you've got Hindus, Sikhs and Buddhists that believe multiple gods. So that's that's not that doesn't make any sense. And it breaks the second commandment, guys. So he's not a Christian. And I'm saying that right now. He's not a Christian. So they've given him this because it comes it goes back to Henry the Eighth. When he started the church, he self-elected himself as Pope, head of the church. And that is exactly what they've done to King Charles. But it's funny how they don't mention 
that he is appointed head of the church in that ceremony. No. Because they even know themselves it's not right. And, you know, I'm talking from a Church of England perspective right now. It doesn't make any sense. Now, let's go from a Catholic perspective. Right? So, you've used all Catholic liturgies, Catholic prayers, Catholic everything. But you're declaring you are going to protect the Protestant faith. Right? Okay, cool. But what are you a defender of? Not defender of the faith. It's defender of the faiths. Now, he's obviously done that to be more inclusive, more woke. We know Charlie's very woke. But whose detriment has he done that to? Think about it. Whose detriment? You know, we're all seen as one body, aren't we? Us, all Christian denominations, the body of Christ. You know, we profess the creed, which is the holy Catholic church, which means universal, small c Catholic, universal. So surely that's the faith he has to protect. What's funny, guys, is Defender of the Faith was given to Charles, sorry, was given to the British monarchy in the 15th century by guess who? The Pope. Pope Leo gave this title to Henry VIII before he did all that funny business and started the Reformation. And then the monarchy have kept that through the, begin through the end of time till now. They've kept that. Every monarchy. Queen Elizabeth just passed away. She was defender of the faith. So that is an important title. Um, and it has universal truth to it. <coughs> In the sense, faith purely means Christian. Right? Not Church of England. So it's quite sad that he's diminished that title now. You know, he's... Um, he doesn't want it anymore. And it's, you know, and furthermore, in that ceremony, there's one thing they omitted, which every coronation has included for 500 years. And that is the creed. And in the creed, it says, we believe in the holy universal church. So because that wasn't declared, guys, he doesn't believe in it. So he goes through all that sacrament, that Catholic sacrament, which was behind a screen, by the way. And we don't know if it was actually done. We don't know what was done behind that screen. But to me, it shows the hi hypocritical nature of the whole service, the double standards, the contradictions. It's unbelievable. And if we're going to go from a Catholic perspective... You guys should be upset because you sent one of your cardinals, the Pope Francis sent one of his cardinals from the Vatican to witness the occasion. First time a Catholic's ever stepped foot in a church, a Protestant church for a coronation. Mostly because the Church of England refused it up until now. So they brought them in, a cardinal, and also Bishop Nicholas. Yes, Bishop Nicholas from Westminster Cathedral, the Roman Catholic Cathedral down the road, half a mile down the road from Westminster Abbey. The Catholic Bishop was there blessing King Charles with the Pope's approval. Does the Pope believe apostolic succession? Does he believe in one holy church. These are all the questions Catholics now have to ask themselves. Does he believe in transubstantiation in Holy Communion? Why I ask this is because during COVID he closed all the churches. And, uh, and the sacrament of Holy Eucharist was always something that was imperative for salvation for a Catholic. Because you're receiving the real body and real blood of Christ. Yet during COVID, that didn't matter. 
They could do it over a computer. Hang on, what's the point of the altar? You dress up a beautiful altar, marble table, golden chalices, the whole nine yard. You, you treat the, ta the altar like a tabernacle, guys. You don't even let people put foot on it. That's how important the altar is when it comes to transubstantiation, yet you are happy for your congregation, your members, to drink wine behind a computer screen. Do you want more examples? I can give you a hundred. You've got German gay um, bishops blessing same-sex marriage. He's not punishing them over it. Even though homosexuality is part of canon law that is abominable. It's in black and white. Go through Catholic catechisms. He said a few weeks ago, another contradiction, he said um, homosexuality is not a crime, but it's a sin. Well, it depends what law you look at, mate. If you look at old rabbinical law, it is a bloody crime. Or Mosaic law, it's a crime. What laws are you referring to, Francis? See, this is what doesn't make any sense. The, the guy, for a man who can speak eight languages, who's meant to be a theologian and a highly intelligent individual, the stuff he's bringing forward, including praying to Pachamamas, is just unbelievable. And it, it, it boggles me. It, it, and it makes me think it, it has to be sinister because... If he knows what he's doing is wrong and doesn't care, then he can't be standing as God's Prime Minister. Because that's who he's meant to be. Jesus Christ is King of Kings. He, he's, he's the man under the, just under the throne. Um, what is it, the Vicar of Christ, they call him? It's meant to be replacement of Christ on earth, isn't it? That's what it's meant to be. But is he, is, he, is he fulfilling that role? If I was Catholic, I'd be very, very worried. I'd be starting to question things. Someone said to me the other day, Catholic and Church of England, controlled opposition. I, I said, what do you mean by that? I said, they're both doing fuckery. Deliberately to confuse, because that's what Satan does, right? Seek, kill and destroy. The master of confusion. The bearer of light. You know, comes down looking all holy and great. Like that ceremony yesterday, or how beautiful. But what, when you scratch beneath the surface, what is it really? It's a charade. It's fake. You know, you bring in all these multi-faiths. A Buddhist, a Muslim. And you promote it. And you... You come up with stuff like, we're all servants of Christ. We're all servants of Christ, are we? Yet you make us swear on oath to pledge our allegiance to the king as a royal subject. And you are telling me we're servants of Christ. You want us to serve the king. And you want Christ, you want the king to be Christ's replacement. But you don't tell the brainwashed mob that are watching that. Because they don't understand theology. They don't see it. I can see it. Study church history. Study Roman emperors. This has been happening from the beginning of time. Oppression to the poor. Whether it be taking the poor man's money for indulgences. So they can get their uncle into heaven. It's, it hasn't changed guys. It's still going on. Church of England... You are dismantling your church bit by bit. You are taking it down. And you know you are. You don't care about the future of your church. You know, before the Queen passed, she, she passed through a rule saying the, the king now can marry a Catholic. or well, the royal family, any royal... Um, Queen or King can now marry a Catholic. In fact, I'll go further than that. They can marry anybody. So don't expect the monarchy to stay Christian, guys. They're already showing signs that they're far from that.
but soon it's going to be out in the open. Now it's just a pretense, it's just, it's just a cover up, but soon, because you can just see it. They don't care. They don't care about preserving the faith. You know, it's all words at the end of the day. When he sweared on over, I'll protect Protestant. How can you? You're not protecting the Protestant Reformation. You're not even fulfilling the Protestant Reformation. You are counterfeit Catholic. You want all the great things of the Catholic Church. All, all the historical, liturgical things. The culture. Whether that be doing the sign of the cross. You want all that. But at the same time. Yeah, we're blessed gays, Marion. We'll we'll let, we'll let women vicars in. Do you know what, married couples? You can carry on wearing contraception. Divorce, yeah, it's fine. I'll tell you what, I'll go one further. You can marry a divorced person. There you are. Divorce your wife, marry him who's divorced. Like Charles and Camilla. <laughs> you know, even though in the Bible it says... You're basically an adulterer if, 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 if you marry someone who's divorced. Um, the, the, the bars drop so low and so unbiblical, it's got to the point now they don't know that they're ass on the elbow. They don't know what's true and what's not. They just spoon fed it. All this woke nonsense in church, you know, they've got they've got they've got vicars that are transgendered. They've got vicars that are sleeping with other men, actually cohabitating with other men. Oh, but that's fine because they're married civilly. Oh right, oh that's fine then. So they can marry civilly but be together in the vicarage, the presbytery, the manx, whatever you want to call it. They can live in sin with that person. Oh, but they don't have sex. Well you know. Oh, we trust their integrity. They're holy men. But they've got some sort of relationship because they're together. Oh, but it's platonical. What's platonical? Well, it means they love each other. Yeah, but how do you express love? Sex, isn't it? No, not necessarily. Okay, I'm, I'm lost. I'm just going to leave it there. You're fucked up. Sorry about my language. Just angry now. So there's your Catholic perspective right there. Okay. Third and f but least of all, we need to look at it from just a general standpoint, from general public, how general public see it, okay? Um, and Christians that don't subscribe to denominations, which, quite frankly, I'm, I'm coming that way myself now. Um, let's look at it from this perspective. It's a mess, isn't it, guys? It, you know, people are watching me right now. I, I presume most of you have maybe from that... You're not uh, Catholic or Church of England, and um, and you're just looking at it from a general p perspective. Absolute mess. And it's quite worrying. I mean, you give King Charles the power to anoint the sick. But you know he's not going to do it. I mean, just, just put that in your smut pipe and smoke it. Just that. It makes no sense. There's so much of that that didn't make any sense to me. I mean, Pope Francis sent him a relic, which is meant to be a cross uh, made out of wood, which was the tree that Christ was... Uh, crucified on and um he sent that to the child skin Charles as a gift you're promoting heresy my friend this is apostasy at its highest level this is like saint athanasius giving arion a gift and saying you know what you take my crown buddy you're great Let's throw you a party. You don't believe in the Trinity. You're going against the fundamental pillars of Christianity. But you know what? Yeah, top guy. Top guy, Arion. Let's all go Arian now. 
yeah, I'm, I'm just going to cancel the the, um, the Council of Nicaea. I've decided it's not necessary. This Arion guy, he, he's right on, man. He's right on. Yeah, big, big mess. Big, big mess. Um, but what do we, where do we go from here? Just pray. That's all you can do, you know. Pray for these people. But they are so lost. These institutions, these old institutions, which a lot of people think, yeah, they've got so much prestige because they've lasted so long. And that's testament and how strong they are. But how have they lasted? You know, they've lasted through bully boy tactics and... <sighs> You know, it's, it's all about control, isn't it? It's imperialism. It's, it's, it's all it is. You know, they, they, they were. You look at the Old Testament. There were kingdoms, bad kingdoms that lasted a long, long time. You know, how long were the Jews in Egypt under the Pharaoh? You know, how long were the Jews exiled to Babylon? These are all questions you've got to ask yourself. Just because Christ's risen, it doesn't mean from the day of Pentecost everything has been slap, bang, on the money and we're on a road to heaven. Yes, a church was established, but not in this form. You know, people have a dig at, at Protestants for, for relying on the Bible as a source of authority. But other than God, who can you actually rely on? And yes, it's difficult when you're looking at the Bible through different lenses and everyone's got their own interpretation. Everything's individualised. And a lot of people twist it to fit their own narrative and all that kind of thing. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm, you can come to common consensus, guys. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm going to church at the moment and most people agree on basic fundamentals. They know what's wrong and they know what's right. And that's what you got to do now. you just got to find a decent church that follows correct biblical doctrine. And, and honestly, it's grassroots level now. You know, I was one of those guys that only trusted the big franchises. Oh, I'll only get a burger at McDonald's. I'll only get a coffee at Starbucks because you know what you're going to get. And it's reputable. Yeah, sure, you could argue the big churches, Catholic, Anglican, they're reputable. I mean, they have to be going as long as they have. But we're in end days, guys. There's not long left. We, we've really got to open up our discernment and now look to each other now for guidance. And that's the message today, guys. Forget this imperialism. It's riddled with contradictions. We need to look up at the Lord and pray for his guidance using his pastorship. You know, his spiritual presence, you know, because, you know, pray for discernment, you're given it. It's, it's, it's a great gift of the Holy Spirit, you know, you just, and, you, and use that to, to seek truth. Ugh. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Take care.